Are you a business owner looking for real advice and input? You're in the right place. From concept to launch to growth, funding and beyond. Welcome to Startup Hustle with your hosts. One once sold a business for $150 million. The other, the author of Million Dollar Bedroom. Here are your hosts of Startup Hustle, Matt DeCourcy and Matt Watson. And we're back. Another episode of Startup Hustle. Matt DeCourcy here with Matt Watson. Hi, Matt. What's going on, man? Just another day in the queue, baby. I'm hungry. I am too, man. I'll tell you what, you know, one thing that I've really wanted to do, you know, I, I mentioned here in queue time, quarantine, man, it's keeping Q-time. me down. I know. I don't like queue time. Q time is due time is what I'm saying like, now. I, it's like we're in timeout, but at least we don't have to put our noses in the corner. I know. You know who else has been in timeout? Restaurants. So I yeah. thought we'd get an expert in today. Today, we're here on yet another episode of Startup Hustle, which by the way, is brought to you by Fullscale.io, helping you build a software development team quickly and affordably. With us today, we have a stressed out entrepreneur. And his name is Ezzy Redwood. That's how he wanted to be introduced. But Ezzy is also the owner and founder of the Wings Cafe and works with Lily and James Creative on a lot of other stuff. Ezzy, what's up? Hey, what's going on? Just getting through another day here in the queue. Gotcha. gotcha. And I'm I'm a partner at uh, Wings Cafe, you know, me and the the brothers and and family here. So, yeah, shout out to them. Well, I want to talk a little bit about that because obviously the restaurant industry and just food service in general has been really, really affected by the coronavirus. And, you know, I was hoping we could get you to talk a little bit about that. I think that probably has a lot to do with why you are, quote, stressed out. Yeah, it it might play a little role, just a little bit. (laughs) Well, talk to us a little bit about Wings. Let's give us a little background on the Wings Cafe, just the history, backstory, a little bit on that before we talk about, you know, how some of that's been affected lately. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, So we started, uh, so me, uh, my brother and my uncle, uh, and, uh, you know, basically we we did a little uh, um, family shop. Originally, it was uh, the original location, which is still there, is behind a quick trip in uh, in the Northland. For those of you listening who aren't familiar with Quick Trip, it's like a, a loved um, gas station kind of like Piggly Wiggly or you know whatever else. Uh, but yeah, that was how we started. Super humble. Also, uh, in the recession, we started, and uh, unbeknownst to us, we also started in the beginning of uh, what would be a chicken shortage. Uh, and so the price of chicken shortly after we started, uh, the price of chicken skyrocketed 400%. Uh, Whoa. So, whereas we were looking at 89 cents a pound for our main product, uh, that ended up, you know, then transitioning to as high as $4 a pound for our main product. So that was awesome. Uh, we were stressed out then as well. <laughs> you know, uh, but yeah, you know, we we were able to uh, be- very barely make it out of uh, out of that recession, and uh, yeah, be fortunate to be able to bring a lot of uh, attention uh, to the culinary side of the Northland, which for those uh, who are outside Kansas city, the Northland is kind of like the North and game of Thrones. Like there's a wall, <laughs> you know, there's this wall called the river and <laughs> anything North of the, of the wall, uh, you know, like people South of the wall refer to as like, you know, essentially the wilding. So they have no wait, idea. Wait, I, I'm, I'm a wildling in the South. I think it's the other way around. Well, no. So if you're in the South, like your view of everyone North of the river is like, is yeah, they, just, they just have no idea what goes on up there. They're like, I think there might be people up there. Like there might be like some, some I heard there was a Walmart or something. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think that's it, an accurate description. That's yeah. funny. I like that. It's uh it's thirty eight percent of the of the city's population lives up north, but you would not be able to tell. Uh, but uh, essentially, like you know, we'll, we'll have people. Just as a quick on that, we'll have people who live next to the river 
you know, there's like a lot of luxury lofts just south of the river, like facing the river, you know, feet from the river, and they will drive down south before they will cross the river. You know, they'll drive like, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes down south before they go seven minutes north. Uh, but anyhow, uh, yeah, we were uh, fortunate to be able to innovate wings. Uh, so we would bring uh, different flavors. We did espresso chocolate barbecue. We did um, partnerships with distilleries. Uh, we would just take risk with wings. And that, you know, fortunately paid off. We got, um, this is number three place to eat in Kansas City. Um, we we're, you know, number nine before that. Uh, we, you know, we were one of the first restaurants to have a perfect rating on Yelp and Urban Spoon and Facebook and Google and Google Plus because that was still a thing then. And uh, Zagad and Trip, you know, Travel Advisor, Trip Advisor, Trip Advisor. Um, and so, yeah, so so that was that was really cool. Um, and uh, you know, we got a lot of publicity in ESPN and um, Yahoo and other media forums with so yeah, so. We- with all that though, now this, obviously this last month has probably been absolute chaos for you. Can you give us a little rundown on, you know, like how that whole thing's come down the pipe, how you're dealing with it? Like what's the, what's the real story out there? Uh, the answer is yeah, it's quickly, quickly. It's like, yeah, it's, it's like, it's looking like we were going to, to be unaffected here in the Midwest. And then two days later, it's like, nah, nah, it's, it's, it's going to affect us pretty severely. So I think it's one of those cases where you've, you, you kind of see, um, you, you see three different types of restaurant. You see the corporate restaurant or the, um, yeah, I don't want to, you know, piss anybody off, but you see the, the, the people who just kind of give up. Uh, they give up on their staff, they give up on their business and maybe they have it covered by insurance. Maybe they don't, maybe they, you know, depending on their policies, you know, I, I don't know, you know, kind of everyone's situation, but I, you know, it, that, that's definitely perhaps, uh, there are definitely a segment that maybe saw that as a time to get out. Or saw it as a time to, you know, at least let their people go do something else. And so, um, so you see that uh, where people would have to lay off their people. You also saw corporations uh, like, you know, corporate restaurants where they would put their people on furlough, which I, I just, just strongly disagree with because that means that they can't file for unemployment in some cases. I think that might have changed with the, you know, verbiage passed in this last bill. Uh, we're, we're still reviewing it, but uh, at least initially, like that would be kind of, um, uh, I don't know, like uh, that just didn't sit well with me. Uh, and then you saw like uh, emerge the uh, restaurateur, who really wanted to fight for their people, right? Because the easier path, uh, if you had the insurance that covered a situation like that, the easier path was definitely to just <laughs> like close down. Like that was by far the easier path. Do most restaurants have insurance that would cover something like this or is that uncommon? It depends on the on your policy, like what you decided on when you were doing it or not. Um, it's not... It, yeah, it, it's not a case by case. Like it depends on what you you know kind of decided you know to to have covered. Hmm. But, well, so so of all the so you just mentioned like a lot of different options. What what route have you chosen? Have you guys are is your staff are you guys open? Are you providing carry out? Are you doing any of that? Yeah. So we actually. Um, we are still open. We we had a conversation with the team fairly early on uh, where we were like, hey, we're going to, you know, you guys will have checks. <laughs> you know, I don't know how many, but you're going to have at least a couple, you know, uh, regardless of what happens. And then like, you know, because we, you know, like they needed to, to hear that. Um, but then after that, we're like, shoot. How do we? How are we gonna make that happen? <laughs> let's, let's, let's look at this and see. Yeah, you know, but I, you know, we're we're pretty committed early on to trying to make it work, and I think that we're fortunate in that you know part of our model was already uh, to go orders. It wasn't like a, a big part, 
of our model, but it was at least a, a, a part of it. And so, but but then again, like even if it wasn't, we would have we would have fully transitioned into that. So, yeah, I mean, and, and you see some restaurants uh, really leaning into that, even if they're higher scale, and you see other restaurants who um, have kind of given up which i understand you're under a lot of pressure already and then in most cases like people don't really understand that restaurants actually pay some of the highest taxes of of any business uh in proportion to how much money they make because uh you have the physical location right um you like the, these restaurants are in triple net leases, which means that they pay the building's property tax. That property tax is flown through to them. So they're paying the property tax on the building. They're paying the insurance on the building. They're paying their own business insurance. Then they're paying property tax on all of the kitchen equipment and every table and chair in the building. And so it's, it, it could, you, they could easily have a assessed property tax value of $500,000 or more, you know, and so that's before you get to the sales tax, any special taxes from their district or county, uh, payroll taxes, earnings taxes, you know, and so, and, and then you have credit card tra- uh, processing fees, and then, the, you know, those are taxed. And so like, yeah, you know, they're, they're very, very uh, thin margins and they're very there's a lot of ways to die and they're usually a, a very small path through the wildness uh, wilderness uh, in order to survive and if you misstep then you're you're kind of screwed what is a uh, normal margin for a restaurant like a net you know EBITDA or net net margin like 12 percent 12 percent 12 percent of sales is what a restaurant's hoping to keep yep Wow. Yeah. I've, I've known a lot of people that have, have opened, ran or run restaurants and they're either killing it or they're getting killed. It seems like a, it seems like a, and pun intended here, a real feast or famine style style business. I mean, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not, it's never been my thing. You know, I've never, I growing up, but Matt, did you ever work at a restaurant? You know, I never did. Honestly, it was not something I ever really wanted to do, and uh, I managed to never, never have to do it as in like high school or anything. I, I did. For, I worked at a couple places, like I, when I was like in my teens, like a pizza place, and then I worked uh, at at Jazz down there at Thirty Ninth and State Line. Yeah. I had the worst job ever. I shucked oysters all day. You got to say it the right way. You got to say Jazz, yeah, you gotta dude. Do it, yeah, there dude. was no there was no jazz and spirit in that job. It sucked the will out of my life. I just literally, I really did shuck oysters all day. It's like the worst fucking job in the history of jobs. I look back at that and I'm like, good lord, it's been. I've done that. That was like the, yeah, yeah. It all feels a lot better. Well, Ezzy, so um, I don't, you know, I I got something I want to talk to you about. So. Um, last week I was sitting around and I was, you know, trying to think about different, different local businesses that were struggling and how they might, how we might be able to do something to help them out and maybe help someone else out. And I started a fundraiser on Facebook that, um, where I wanted to, I was raising money to help, uh, sp- I wanted to spend the money at local restaurants who then would deliver food to medical care providers here in Kansas City. And uh, I've raised $1,748 as of the time of this recording, um, which is pretty exciting the, considering we still have a few days to go. And I also put up a poll in the Startup KC Facebook group about where I should spend that money. And uh, or at least some of it. And the Wings Cafe has is in a overwhelming lead position. So I want to let you know that I'm willing to commit half of that money that I've already raised to spend at Wings so we can feed some local medical providers. So congratulations, you're going to get $850 in, in incoming revenue. And we're going to figure out where we're going to send some food from your place to local medical providers. So hopefully uh, we can we can come up with something cool there. So congratulations and thank you. Yeah, that's amazing. That was my first time hearing about that. 
uh, yeah, it, yeah. It, well, oh. well, well, I, it's hopefully it's still not over, but I, you know, I wanted to start getting some of this money out. Um, cause I know there's a lot of people in need and, and yeah, I'm hoping to raise a little bit more. My fundraiser ends on the 4th of April. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and, and make that commitment to wings and we can talk it a little later about figuring out where we're going to send that. But yeah, I think it's pretty cool. We've had a lot of people, uh, Mr. Master Watson donated some of his, his vast wealth to help feed people. Right, Matt? I did. I donated some money. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I thought it was I've a been cool su- cause. I've been surprised. At, at, honestly, at, I mean, we raised 1500 bucks in, in the first 24 hours and I was like, Whoa, I thought that was really cool. So yeah, still seeing it kind of trickle in, make a little push for that. So I'm sure we can figure out something cool. I know there's a lot of people in the medical community that um, that need a meal. I'm just looking at what's going on in some of these other cities and seeing how taxed these people are, seeing people with pictures of uh, wearing face masks where they've got scars on the bridge of their nose and their cheeks from, you know, I keep thinking, I'm like, man, when are these people even getting a minute to go get some food, get some rest, get whatever. So hopefully we can maybe keep that fundraiser going for a little while. So yeah, I'm assuming that 850 bucks will buy, buy some food for some people. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Cause we've actually been, uh, trying to figure out how to get masks uh, more masks to healthcare providers. Um, and so, yeah, we've been in contact with, with that, that, I, that I can't help with. I was, I was watching my brother-in-law. He did a, actually did a, a he's an, uh, a doctor and he did a, a fundraiser of sorts for medical supplies. And, you know, that's what kind of sparked the idea. I was like, man, what else could we do? And in the past, um, and we didn't, uh, we used to, my wife and I used to go to Walmart and, uh, every year and we'd buy about a thousand dollars worth of socks, t-shirts, pajamas, and stuff like that for kids. And we'd drop it off at, uh, uh, children's mercy hospital. And apparently they have a big need for stuff like that. So sometimes the things that you wouldn't think of are the things that really, uh, make the biggest impact for the medical community. So thanks for teaming up with me on that. Yo, I love you guys for that. I actually, uh, I did find, you know, mass providers actually locally here um, with. Hey, uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and actually, so my 10 seconds on that is that what people haven't realized yet because the virus is so new, even in the healthcare profession, is that the N95 masks that people, that hospitals have right now don't actually stop the virus uh, because the it only stops up to 0.3 particles, but the virus is 0.1. Particle. Oh wow! And so you know, so they're literally so that's part of why even the ones with masks are still getting sick in Italy and then like every, you know Spain and and New York uh, is because the virus is too small and it can stay airborne in hospital conditions, which it, you know isn't a lot of air circulation and like all the other things. So, so is there a different kind of mask they should be using? Yeah, so they should be using the N99, uh, or if, if it's international, it's uh, F, um, FFP3 mask. Uh, but those are even harder to come by usually than the N95s, uh, and those are the first things to get snatched up. But there's actually, in Kansas City, uh, or just south of Kansas City, a woman who changed her whole production around, international production around, to start making these masks. And they get their first shipment in, uh, you know, here, here, like tomorrow, I, t- today, actually today. So that's, that's something that like, I wish more healthcare, uh, administrators, providers, like just people in general knew about because, you know, uh, like it, it, it has not looked very good for the healthcare providers in places that have already been hit. Yeah. yeah, I think in, in New York, there's somewhere around like a thousand police officers and firefighters alone, not even medical professionals that have come down with coronavirus in addition yeah, to the medical providers. I'm, I'm going to make it my new mission. You hear it here first because that's ridiculous. I hadn't heard that. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I'm going to make it my mission to make sure that we get them some masks. So you, you heard it here first. I'm going to now be working on that. Um, and I appreciate you guys helping us. And I'd say that for, um, any of, uh, 
my restauranteur friends or just, you know, business owners in general, one of the things that you have to do, uh, I, I, I think, is decide if you're going to live or die, right? Um, it, you, know, you can't be in the middle. You can't be in the middle because you'll die in the middle or you'll, you know, you know, the, your chances of surviving are a lot lower. You have to commit and like that will of I will make it and I'm going to innovate out of it has really kind of what, what um, is, is like the only reason why we're still around even because, you know, early on, like we were like, shoot, like, what do we do? Like, you know, we're like, we we're kind of in that weird space that it's easy to be in any way as an entrepreneur, but then as a you know restaurateur, when you can no longer like when, when you're looking at quarantine and originally the quarantine was looking like, you know, there wasn't going to be anything when they first were discussing it in New York. And so we're like, wow, like, so we're just going to have all these people on payroll and we can't do anything. And then like, it, it kind of like, you know, worked itself out. But, but right then we were like, you know, we're going to, after a day of sulking, of course, and being sad, um, then we, uh, we were like, you know what, we're going to try to make it work. How can we help and how can we evolve our model, uh, even drastically to solve this? And so our models changed every other day, almost as we've had to pivot and like have new obstacles that would normally kill us. Uh, but you know, we're, you know, that was where the idea to make the immune boosting sauce came from, you know, that was, oh, I like it you know, and, and the super shots and, you know, leaning into delivery. And so like, how do we change our packaging? How do we make wings last longer? And so these, these are like all the conversations we're now having. How do we like, you know, put into place different things where we can, you know, uh, keep, keep people safe. Um, you know, how do we, you know, we have to change our phone plan. <laughs> right? Uh, Dude, right. These are all reasons why you are the stressed entrepreneur. Well, you know, as you said something that I think, I think it all has to start with this simple question that entrepreneurs have to ask themselves is, do I want to sink or swim? And, you know, like, here's the thing is, is the current is fucking rough right now. The undertow, the waves, all of it, man, it's choppy. And, you know, you have to, if you want to swim, you need to start, you got to start paddling. Like you just got to start getting those arms moving and start kicking. Cause the thing is, is if you, if you don't decide that you want to be a strong swimmer at these times, you're just going to get sucked under, man. It's going to pull you under. Now, some people uh, have spent a lot of time talking about this over the last couple of weeks. I mean, I mean, here's the reality. Some people are not, you, you could be Michael Phelps and you might not swim out of this. Um, and that's, that's reality for some. So there might be a level of, of, of self-preservation that is going to kick in with some people, but the ability to pivot and do a lot of different things, like, you know, you mentioned like, I mean, fucking a man, like immune, immune boosting wing sauce. Why not? I mean, we had Kyle Fitzgerald from super shots on earlier this week, talking about some of the stuff that they do. And, you know, like, I don't know, man, maybe we need to give him some of this money and deliver some of the, some super shots along with the immune boosting wings and just get, get, get those folks that are getting exposed to stuff all jacked up on, a, on immunity. So we did a, uh, uh, we did a smoked berry herb sauce is essentially what it, uh, what it ended up as. And we, uh, we took, uh, 20, we took 20 different herbs that are uh, designed to boost your upper respiratory immune system and put them together in the super shot. And then we took 20 different herbs that are meant to boost your general immune system and put that in the sauce. And so we have like the wing sauce with the wing super shot. Uh, that way your body has the best chance of fighting the, the disease you know, possible. And, uh, and, and, and so, yeah, so one of the things I was doing, I was, I was over here talking to, you know, herbologists and, and stuff like right before the, the, uh, quarantines and, you know, then saying, okay, how do we design something that, you know, makes herbs taste good. And then saying, okay, how do we do this in a way that doesn't like kill our brain? It's a pretty big risk to do a healthy sauce as a comfort food place, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's something that could go the wrong way if you don't, you know, kind of 
uh, handle it correctly. And so like, we felt like it was a risk, but we also felt like we didn't care because it was the right thing to do to help give our people the best chance of uh, our city, the best chance of making it through. So yeah, I think we officially announced it, <laughs> you know, uh, here like this week. And so, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of where we felt about it. And so we just got to a point where we were like, we don't care how you know, it impacts the brand because it's the right thing to do. So, Ezzy, I've got a question for you. You know, with all the, you know, we were wanting to talk a little bit about the the challenges. Is and I, I I love the pivot with the with the immune boosting sauce and and the spirit and the vigor when it comes to. Well, I guess you you would either fly or crash if we're going to be wings. We can't say sink or swim. Um, <laughs> I got it all today, baby. I'm I'm lined up for this. It's just rolling right out now. So as you know, with with the level of uncertainty and other things that are going on for the general restaurateur, you know what kind of what kind of pain points are they going to have to get over to get back open? Like, what what's really just a generalist point of view here? Yeah, um, it depends on their staffing model. Um, you know, like because uh, you have the full service and then you have fast casual. Um, a lot of the, well, I'll just say there's, there's some fast and you have everything in between. And so there are, you know, one model where you're used to just paying your people. So they get a, a sal- essentially they get hourly wages and then anything they get in tips on top of that is, is great, but that's not the main focus per se. That's not, they're not looking for that check to check. You have the other model where like you pay them very little, but they are used to getting a lot of money in tips. And, um, and so I'd say on the ones that uh, the people, you know, the staff gets money, you know, in, in hourly wages, uh, that's uh, more significant. Um, then I think that the, the onus is really on the uh, restaurateur to figure out how to, yeah, it's, that's almost easier because you can focus on how to get, you know, to keep the business making money. Uh, you know, and like how to innovate, how to better reach people, even if that's like, and then it just comes down, that just kind of comes down to innovation, being uh, creative and, and how you adapt and adjust and then hustle, right? Like, you know, like we're going to be going door to door with a uh, little, um, you know, door hangers <laughs> with our menu on it next week. Right. Uh, you know, this is like, and then like, we're going to figure out how I get it delivered to them. Um, but uh, on the other side, you know, it's, it's um, a little bit harder because you don't have that cost structure built into your model. And so keeping people would be, uh, significantly more difficult, but I, I do think, uh, and you, you might have a little bit more overhead with like how many people you have back of house. So it's, is the big challenge losing the threat of losing your staff. Well, yeah, if you lose your staff, then like you come back and they get other jobs, then you're, right. you have, you, now you have a business where nobody knows, you know, nobody what knows to do and how to do it. Right. How to do it? It takes considerable training a lot of times to like get people to do either cook the exact way you like it, be detail oriented, or like either front of house or back of the house. Like everyone has their own style and they coach up the people that they have, and that's usually a lot of coaching. And so now, if you're starting back at zero, your customer still expects you expects the same product. Like they don't know that like this is completely new staff, and True. so they're like, why is the steak different? <laughs> you know what's what's going on like yeah you know, the puree doesn't seem you know whatever like this puree has lumps in it well yes because like they all know how you know whatever it is and so i think that's a that's a big threat and then the other threat that's a, a very impending uh it, it weighs on the back of i think all of our minds is you know if we go like are we head into a deep recession and uh are people going to have money in a little while because if they don't then that's going to be a problem like if they've, if they are, 
forced to spend more money than they normally would in the quarantine period, then when they come out of that, if they're surprised and don't have a job, or if they're coming out of that and now they realize that you know they still have to pay all these life expenses, or something happens, or they get sick, or whatever, you know, then that's a lot of people that now don't have money for doing something that is seen by you know uh, many people as a luxury. So even if you're going, um, you know, heck, even if you're going to get burritos at Chipotle you know, like you could probably make those burritos for cheaper yourself at home, you know, or it might not be as good. (laughs) It might not be as good, but you can still do it. Right. And so like everyone's kind of feeling that uneasiness about, will this take us into a recession? How deep will that recession be? And how much, um, you know, money will be out there for people to, um, you know, go out to eat if, if they, um, if that happens now for us, like what I'll just say, and and I guess this is, you know, uh, uh, maybe free advice for anyone else who's out there who's in the restaurant business. Not that, you know, anyone would need our advice, but for us, like we're, we're going to be shifting our um, branding and messaging to essentially say um, that, you know, to, to, to double down our core values, right? Because that's what we had to do with the staff. We had to double down the core values, like who are we? What do we do? What are the services we provide? And so out of that, we were like, you know, at the at the end of the day, we provide happiness, right? People buy wings when they are in a good mood, a great mood, or when they're in a terrible mood, you know, and and such. And you know, like it's rare for people to just be in like a a weird space or like a I guess everyone's in a weird space now, but like on a normal basis, it's weird for people to just be like, ah, oh, you know, I mean, it's a day, whatever, you know, and then be like, you know what, I want to perpetuate my blah day with some wings. Usually they're like, I need a pick me up. I'm going to grab some wings or I feel great. I'm going to get some wings or I feel down. I'm, I'm going to get some wings to make me feel better. Or, or even I'm passing by the wings place because I'm out on my way home from work. I would imagine that would be a, a you know, like, I mean, how, how often do you pick something up out of convenience or you call home and you're like, Hey, do you want me to pick up dinner? Sure. Get that wings place that you drive by or whatever. Uh, One thing I do know is I remember a video that, that Watson posted a while back where he had attempted to cook something for his kids and he gave a spoonful of one of them to one of his kids and who immediately spit it right back out. <laughs> yeah. You remember that Matt? Oh yeah. 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 I, was that an attempt to make Filipino food or was that just general something? Uh, it was a Filipino dessert made out of mangoes and graham crackers and sweetened milk. I don't know why anybody wouldn't like that, but it, well, but I mean, it, it's all about the, it's not just about the ingredients, Matt. It's about the love and the the preparation and the thoughtfulness that you put into it. So you might have to step up your game there. I'm con- we might have to deliver some wings to your house, Matt. Dude, I, uh, <clears throat> you mentioned all the reasons earlier to have wings. I have all of those and more wings are my favorite. I do too. Now, you know, our listeners can't see that we, we've been using a new virtual studio so we can actually see each other, but it doesn't record the video. Matt, you have like 40 rolls of toilet paper stacked up behind you. I think you're ready for wings, both on the, <laughs> both on, both on, the on the front end and the back end, man. Like you're really, you really have a well, you're a full stack wings eater and, and preparer. I have to say though, my new favorite kind of wings is actually a Filipino style. I, you know, I, I, I took the entire full scale, well, not entire, the uh, whole leadership committee and some people that came for a, a Saturday presentation out to the local barbecue place right next to our office when I was in Cebu and. Uh, that was diff- different. I was. I need to send some some barbecue sauce back over. Well, once again with us today, we had Ezzy Redwood, who's partner and co-founder of a lot of different things. It, it describes himself as a stressed out entrepreneur. Uh, the Wings Cafe is available for carry out, so you might want to check them out. You're also involved with Lillian James Creative. Hello, Aaron Falk, who's a, a friend of the podcast. Well, Ezzy, I just wanted to say thanks for coming in. We're gonna we end our episodes of Startup Hustle by doing what we call the founders freestyle and we'll let you have the first spot for that is there any any advice you'd like to give to fellow restaurant owners on the way out 
Uh, yeah, first, thanks uh, so much for having me. Love you guys. Love Aaron, gang, gang. Um, you know, yeah, I'd say uh, just think about like what your, you know, people, you know, use you for. So like your customers, like what do they like, why do they come to you and try to boil it down to like the most like basic, you know, degree of like what they're doing. Is it because they want to feel a certain way about themselves? If so, then what? And what are you best suited to like help provide them in terms of how they feel about themselves uh, or what you can provide to them, like champagne, per, you know, celebration, like what are you? Uh, and then, you know, really double down on your core values and really define that and communicate that. Uh, it's hard because content is, is like really hard to make right now. But um, yeah, like, you know, that's kind of what we're, you know, ha have started the process of doing and what you'll see a lot more of. So I'd say like maybe that would be that would be great. And, and then lean all the way in on whatever that core value is. If it's providing happiness, like, you know, for us in Wings, we sell happiness. And so if that's the case, then we're getting ready to go all in on, you know, providing happiness. How can we better increase the happiness when people buy wings or do whatever. So yeah, I mean, that's my, my two cents, you know, before depreciation. Uh, but yeah, thanks for having me. Two cents before depreciation. Um, what do you got master Watson? You know, will you guys deliver wings from the North side of the wall to the South side of the wall? I mean, in like the, re like King's landing far, far South. Is that too is that too far south? You know, we might start that from the Westport location. Uh but you ah. know, make sure you get some. I'll make sure so, you get some. So if I lived closer, I'd be ordering some more wings to help support you guys. But I mean you, you guys drive, drive to the outside of the delivery area, Watson, and then Yeah. Again, that's like a, a thirty minute a thirty minute drive from here or something. But how bad do you want wings? Really bad, but I got some in the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd love to come have some of their wings. They're just a long ways away. So I, I hope, I hope you guys all the best. And uh, like I said, I, if I was closer, I wish I could help support you. So, you know, these are trying times and uh, hopefully you guys could do enough uh, delivery and takeout orders to, uh, you know, just at least keep afloat, you know? So. Well, and, and as I round out this episode, as thanks again for, for, for stopping by our virtual studio, um, when you open back up, we definitely want to come do a live episode there. We've been talking about that. He, he told us that he would help us make a startup hustle wing sauce. And that really got my attention. Um, I mean, overall, I just want to go back to my prior comment of you have to decide whether you want to sink or you're going to swim. Um, you know, like, uh, and, you know, that's the whole thing. And it, I think the first, the very first part of swimming is deciding that you want to, um, cause if you don't want to, you're guaranteed to sink. So, you know, overall, um, as he, thanks for working with me on getting some of this fundraiser money out, uh, 850 bucks, we'll, we'll figure up and follow up on where we sent that. So anyway, we're going to get, get to work on that. See you guys next time.